Thanks. He said, the first one is for my name, the second one is for my Ph.D. <laughs> Ph.D.s today can hardly read or write. It's a uh, rather a lost cause. An insight into, well, for example, you take the phrase, the reason why. This sort of sums up a large episode and a large series of events in British history. It was a boner, a complete blooper in telegraphic communication. I'm about to advance. They sent the order or the information back behind the lines, send reinforcements, we are about to advance. At behind the lines, the message arrived, send three informants, we're going to advance. That's what happened on the charge of light brigade. Are you serious? That's what happened. Just that sort of blooper. Um, <laughs> I still fail to see how uh, communication as a transference of information is dead. I shouldn't say it was dead. It's just changed. Uh, it's mostly nonverbal now. It's mostly done by environments. For example, high rise is a new form of communication. It all depends where it is, though. If it's on the side of a mountain, it looks nice. If it's on a flat street, it looks horrible. If it blocks out individual homes, it's kind of bad at times. No, well, otherwise, it's just a cemetery. They have high-rise cemeteries now, which are very... That's what they're really intended for. You buy yourself a little box in the sky instead of taking up space on the ground. Literally, the new, new high-rises are all cemeteries in the States. It seems to be a general trend. You take, take boxes. You take boxes from everything. Oh. Um, in school, they put you in what they call classes. They put you in your in your category, do. you know. They still do. And every time that they try and do that, they're locking you away. As far as well, the why don't you try to find out where it all came from? Who thought it up in the first place? Because it's certainly dead. You want to track it back. I mean, you know, the who instituted the crime in the well, first place. Why didn't try, try to track it back? I mean, why not just ignore it? Well, bypass it, yes. Yeah. That's one, one way. You get to a point where you have to let things just flow. Well, can't. for example, if you... The, the, I'll tell you one of the difficulties about bypassing. Castro bypassed, bypass, used TV to bypass the electoral system. Now, the electoral system, one little vote at a time, as a means of representing public images and, and uh, public uh, representatives, is utterly obsolete. It's finished. Image-making which is the thing that puts people like Trudeau and Nixon in, into office, has nothing to do with voting. But Castro simply, he didn't try to reform anything. He just bypassed the whole electoral system and went on to TV and talked straight to his people on an educational basis. He turned politics into education. This is the crime that Trudeau has been accused of by Peter Newman of the Star. Peter Newman has accused Trudeau. Now politics has become essentially an educational enterprise um, with public participation, where there is TV. But if you use the electoral system, you have bureaucracy and there is no possibility of education through politics. Um, so until you have dialogue between the uh, bureaucracy and the uh, governed, you have only the old fragmented electoral system with all the machine work and party systems in between you and the government. The government. Uh, same way with, um, with education. In actual fact, you are getting, uh, you go to school with a hundred times more information than your grandfather ever got in his whole lifetime. The day you enter grade one, you know more than your grandfather knew when he graduated. Excuse me, um, you've told us uh, everything that's dead. Well, you've told us a few things yeah. that are dead and obsolete and everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, what we now want to know is What's what we can do about it. And we, no, we need help and no, we need right. solutions. And we don't want right. to sit there well, wasting our time. I'll tell, you. To I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what's alive and what you're not paying any attention to, and that's the satellite environment. The classroom is not having any influence on you. The, sat the satellite environment is having a profound influence on you and your being here this afternoon. Sure, great. But, but you know why? Why can't we spend you know more time what? with the environment with the satellites? sitting there? All right, but the do you know what the satellite does to you? As an environment? What? When it goes around the planet? There. It's a proscenium arch. It turns the planet into a stage. It makes you want to be an actor. <laughs> do your thing. Everybody now wants to do his thing. 
since 1957 when Sputnik went up. And the, ever since that satellite arch went around the planet, the planet ceased to be nature. What we used to call nature is gone. The planet is now contained inside a human box. There is no more nature. What remains is simply whatever we make of this planet by programming. There is no nature anymore. I see no points in the schools at all. Man has returned to the condition of the hunter. Excuse me. Um, did you went to Cambridge University, right? Among others. That means you completed school, right? I, went, I completed several schools. Well, I, did, I did two BAs and two MAs and one PhD. Well, why, if you say school should be bypassed? Because I regard it as utter leisure. I never saw anything that kept me busy in school for five minutes. I never saw it as anything but a big holiday. I never did any work at school. Well, there's, there's no work at school. Well, there's, there's I don't, I don't, I don't work. work either. The amount of work that anybody needs to pass at school is about 20 minutes a day. You're, you're living your life of pure leisure. What are you complaining about? You will never know leisure again as long as you live. Yeah, but what about the hassle of getting into school? Oh, into school. Yeah. And, and I, I thought your problem was getting get out of it. I thought your problem was about how to get out of it. I don't want to get in. I haven't, I haven't long enough. I see. You want to get back? Yeah. Do you know what happens with the big millionaires today? They're dying to teach. Well, find me a millionaire and I'll let them teach <laughs> They want to teach what they know. You see, today, to be a big businessman, you have to know an awful lot. The knowledge industries have become the biggest industries. Big businessmen today are enormously erudite. They have to be. But they, yeah, you know, and uh, and Sam and Sam Sabara, Sam Sabara, here in Toronto. I know it. If they don't have a BA. They have finished high school. That's all. They want uh, certificates that enable them to teach in universities. Now, when business becomes mainly knowledge industry, the executive is a dropout. He wants to teach. The teacher, in the meantime, wants to become a businessman. You talk to them. <laughs> they all want to get into the executive consulting world. They get on committees. Don't bother about respect here, please. I, I don't, I don't, I don't want anybody's problem. respect. Just the, the attention. Teacher, the average teacher. <laughs> what do you mean, average teacher? Are you talking about kindergarten or what? I'm talking about secondary. Uh, I'm talking teacher. about university professors whose the very, ambition. Very great, indeed. Great, the great, great many of them, far too many, and they all want to become big business consultants. I, most of my friends. I, I went, I'm a business consultant, have been for a long time, but I went into it as a pure accident. A philosopher friend of mine at St. Louis University became a consultant and he came out of the Navy. And he pointed out to me the, how easy it would be for me to be a consultant part-time while going on being a professor. Why kill Puerto Rico? So, I've been in one ever since. And uh, moonlighting is a normal thing in our time. Starlighting also. There's no reason why you can't have six jobs while teaching. And uh, hmm? I wonder you're leaving the kids hung up at the place where they feel compelled by home pressures and all to adjust to or adapt themselves to the system. No. You've only to get free of it by having achieved an education. No. As opposed, say, to That's going down to Yorkville Street. No. <coughs> Can't be. They might even take Yorkville Street seriously, in which case they'd be worse off than the, the kids in school. <coughs> your education is your security. You see. Uh, there's, yeah. yeah, there's a lot of... In an affluent society? Well, you can't starve. Well, no, you can't starve. I mean, a lot of people... I'm, well, I can't say a lot of people because it's not a lot of people with me. Mm -hmm. I myself mm -hmm. have a, um, a strange attitude. I'm absolutely terrified of being a poverty stripper. Absolutely terrified. Mm -hmm. That's and, amazing. And, um... That's strange, especially for a Canadian to have that yeah. feeling. Because no, there isn't even one percent of this country ha inhabited. We could put three times the population of the world into Canada and never notice it. And feed them. Uh, last night I saw an, uh, rather an article in the magazine. That article was concerning drugs. And that article had some arguments saying that you can't get certain jobs if you are convicted. And you can't travel if you aren't convicted. And I wonder why these arguments, which have been so often repeated, aren't... Uh, at least I was wondering then why... Well, have you ever asked yourself why drugs have suddenly become popular when they weren't 
say, 30 years ago? I think it's because there's no future. No. Inner tripping is natural in the electric age. All electricity is inner tripping. The electric age is inner trip, period. Marshall, I don't understand the connection between that and when you said that man is becoming more like the hunter. When the we re regress back to a hunting stage. Well, quest for identity, quest for food, quest for any knowledge, quest for awareness, quest for anything at all. Man is all, it, it researchers are all hunters. The CIA, the whole bunch are hunters. All the uh, business community, all the uh, uh, learned community is engaged in hunting today. Cyclopses. They don't have goals anymore. They play the total field. The hunter plays the total field. He doesn't have a goal. So you're a hunter and you get your prey, right? You get credit? No. You get, get your prey, he said. Prey. And, and so, like, yeah. you have your prey and everything, but you find that you can't prey, that your prey cannot possibly help you in what you want to do. What do you want to do? Uh, isn't the, hunt, is, to isn't the hunting, you, isn't you the really hunting really itself like an exciting activity? Like Sherlock Holmes? <laughs> The CIA, it's a big career. Uh, Afrin Symbolist Jr. I mean, this, these are the images of our time. The hunter. The hunter is the, and the researcher is a hunter. Every, all the key figures of our time are hunters. Hunting is pure thrill. Knowledge seeking is pure thrill. Anybody who feeds you classified knowledge in a classroom certainly deserves to be booted out of the place. Yes. It's an age of hunting. You should be asked to join the discovery business. Yeah, right, but uh, the kids these days are being forced to go to school till they're... By whom? Till they're 16. Well, there's a little thing called society. Look, it's uh, awfully shaky. The Negro retribalized the whole whole planet in well, would be five years. We have tribal identity. Yes, you do. And that this identity is not yet prevalent in the society, and that's the meaning of That's society. right. The bureaucracy still uh, hangs on to the old civilized forms of classified identity, which in which they do not believe. They have absolutely no convictions or awareness of civilized identity, but they go on, through the, going through the movements or motions of imposing it on you as a blueprint. That's true. Momentum. What you call No. Progress, you, the word does not exist anymore except among developers. The only people who use the word progress are developers. When you, when you hear the word progress, you know you're dealing with a 19th century mind. The progress literally stopped with electricity. Uh, because you now have everything at once. You don't move on from one thing at a time to the next thing. You have everything. There's no more history. It's all here. It's all here, though. All the past. There, not, there isn't any part of the past that isn't with us, thanks to electricity. But now, it's not thanks to print. It's not thanks to photography. It's thanks to electricity. Speed. Huge speed up means there's no more past. Now, there is no more history, but your teachers and your parents have no belief whatever in identity or the goals of our society. They just go on through the mo motions. No, they don't believe in them themselves. But I thought they were... That's why you... Thought, is an old-fashioned world. It is. But you're, uh, you, you accuse the schools of still imposing them. I'm saying that those who run our schools and our society have no belief in the society they're running. They, gr they agree with you. We're in the subconscious. No, they... No, no, at all levels. Oh, yeah. the, re the reason that... Yeah. The reason, no, 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 the reason that it isn't fun being a rebel today is that everybody agrees with you. I tell you do. Yes, they do. Then well, what's all the fuss? Why exactly. is everybody making such a fuss? Exactly. Trying to get a thrill out of life. <laughs> you know, without opposition, you can't have any thrills. If everyone agrees with you all the time, nobody gets in your way. There's no fun at all. Yeah. Now, just around. automatically hung up by their high schools and by their parents. No. And what is unique about them, it seems to me, is that they insist in thinking for themselves. I, I, uh, in France today, the parents still believe in running the old show. And they just beat the blazes, living daylights out of kids like you. With a baseball bat or anything. They don't care. I live there, I know. They, they, they believe in their blooming world still. Our parents don't, or your parents don't. You're saying because people don't believe.
beat somebody else they don't believe in? Oh, no. Well, violence is the only way of achieving identity. You really believe that? Oh, it's literally true. I mean, the parents... Until, until somebody punches you on the nose, you... Until somebody punches you right on the nose, you don't even know you exist. I mean that. But do you also... I mean, this is literally true. Until Violence is the only form of identity. I know I exist. And nobody's ever hit me in the nose. They will. But do you mean but that... But just a moment. Hold it. Just a moment. Their school system... The school system is hitting you on the nose and making you very unhappy. It's creating a false sense of identity in you. It's giving us an identity? It's false. Why would they do that if they agree to this? Because they have not quite got to the blueprint, you know, the, the uh, stamp, legal stamp form of agreement yet. Uh, but Davis, uh, uh, Davis and his, his, uh, his generation uh, agree with you, you think? The unstructured school bunch? Yeah. They agree with you. What, what did it all break down? Well, yeah, the administrative education. He agrees with you. He's a manager. He's a handicap. Not all the young people agree with us. I mean, like, we are, like, <clears> young people en masse. I mean, the poor like kids, people. poor kids still think they can squeeze something out of the old system. And even rich kids. No, that. rich kids are finished with it. Yeah, I know, but... They've had it. They're fed up. You still think, you still think you can squeeze something out of the old system that will bring you a livelihood. No, not necessarily. I'm going to. Not, not a livelihood. You I can't. I can't. I'm going to. Okay. You know, like it's as simple as that. But you see, the um, the owners of the system don't believe in it. Now, I'm not talking Marxism, which I think is another 19th century thing. I'm confused. If they don't believe in it, what is it still doing? Well, you'd be surprised. Uh, you might ask, why are Coke bottles lying at the curb where there are cabs drawing up? Why? Because nobody has enough energy to pick them up. That's why. Okay, so we got Nobody to... has enough energy yeah, to okay. wrap this society up and put it away. Okay, so we've got to... Suppose we've got this young generation, so-called. Um, do you think they have enough energy? No. Why not? Because you have no no concentrated sense of identity. So you have to have the identity before I you have... I don't see how this comes from the uh, Without identity, it's very difficult to rally energy. Tribal societies are awfully weak in energy. Okay, but we have a false identity. You said that, right? No, I didn't say you have. They're trying to push one onto you. One second, Marshall. Um, you said something about okay, the um, Davis and um, yeah. Harris people okay. and the unstructured yeah. um, people agree with you, kids. But what about all the structured, very, very structured school principals and teachers? Oh, all right, the the, uh, the old rearview mirror bunch. Naturally, they feel the way you do that they their, their livelihood depends upon saying yes to this system. And it takes an awful lot of energy to change the system. And they don't have it. But what if we do have it? What if we... Maybe we don't have the energy. Maybe we, we want to try and have the energy to get ourselves together to change the system. Well, all right. For example, it takes quite a lot of energy to have a dialogue like this. Fine. So uh, most people would rather uh, learn, uh, memorize a few pages of history or a few pages of grammar and be done with it. But what about those of us who don't? Exactly. It takes energy. I just think that this uh, discussion is so much like a school system, it's actually worse than this, that people come here just to sponge. No! I what think they do. Sponge on what? Why Why are there so many more people here for, for this class than there are for an ordinary class? Is, 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 is this a class? class? Because we have somebody... We have somebody no! There have, been this, there have been this many this people here before. Has an aura around them that'll bring people in. Perhaps to a certain extent, but I mean, I can't... A strip teaser... A strip teaser... A strip teacher, teacher puts on her audience by taking off her clothes. And people I go because they know that she's there. No, but I just know it. I I put you on. I put you on by bearing my mind. I put you on as an audience. I wear you as my clothing. Do you think that this is an equal discussion? It isn't. Think you are equal to each one of us, or do you think I don't know. you are equal to the whole group? Because it's mostly... Well, are, are you... I, uh, all right, ask Something a strip teaser. Ask why, they is, a strip, why is a strip teaser equal to the whole group? I don't usually think about a discussion group like that. Now, a strip teaser has to bear herself in order to put on her audience. And when she puts on her audience, she is a corporate power. The narrative. When she steps off the stage, she is a private nobody. Well, I think that a strip teaser and her audience satisfies some needs in her audience that 
normally shouldn't be there. Means we have. That's why it's the same thing to us. Yeah. We need a teacher because we're insufficient inside, that we can't pull things out ourselves. I think we should be able to do it ourselves. Okay. We don't really need a teacher. I we don't really need no. a teacher. No. We need someone. You have don't need anyone. Teacher. Right. The amazing we still need someone, we're still insufficient. The amazing... Did you need some... If there, there should be some way that all us kids together, without Mr. McClune, without adults, could get together and get a discussion as good as this. We have, many times. Well, we have, and there have been this many people here before, too. I, I, I don't see the point. I agree that, that uh, fine, we all fine, you know that um, Marshall McLuhan here is um, a very interesting person and, and like a lot of us came because we wanted to, you know, hear his uh, point of view. A lot of I am not expressing my point of view. Well, some I, of your I, ideas, I am then, some of your ideas. I am analyzing a process and I heartily disagree with it. With I mean, my personal know? feelings about it are absolute detestation. I, I never express my point of view on any subject. Because I'm interested in understanding processes. He wants to be a catalyst in the real No, process. not necessarily a catalyst, but I, I am interested in understanding processes. And I, I understand what's making you tick and what's making you unhappy, but I do not approve of or endorse any of the changes that are causing you to feel this way. Echo is a point of view, and if the world is changing very rapidly, you can't have a point of view. A point of view depends upon fixity. No, no, it, it's, a, it's only an illusion in an electric world. When things are moving very fast, you can't have a stationary position or target. That's why you never know something about you get an event oh, like Kennedy driving off a bridge. And no, you, it's you a, never no, know what no, it isn't that. For example, a few days ago, about 12 days ago, one of the big buildings of Yale University was burned to the ground by students. It's not in the papers yet. Mm hmm it's never been put in the press or on radio. Why? Friends of mine from Yale came here. <laughs> what, why has it never been well, put in the papers? It, it, I don't know. But on the other hand, if what is called news in the newspaper has to have certain characteristics to, in order to sell ads. Just about almost the most efficient way of communicating events that happen. No. That uh, well, we have to select a very tiny section of events. It's very tiny little fragment. Because, like, not everybody has friends coming over from the different <coughs> cities and tell them... Just a moment. What were we talking about before newspapers? Because we don't want to get derailed. <laughs> processes. Yes, I'm, I want to understand the processes by which something becomes news. He made the news. He made it. He made the news. What's it mean? What is news? It means he applies his point of view to a certain situation and No, what, not Who? necessarily... It takes an awful lot of people to make news, you know. You can, one person can't make news. It <laughs> takes a lot of editors, a lot of, lot of machinery, a lot of bureaucrats, a lot of very hard-working little typesetters and so on. Masses of people to make news. This is where you get to the question of what is the true picture of the situation. There is no true picture. Of course there is. Now you're getting into the manufacturing of news. Yeah, it's a process, though. I'm interested. I'm getting into the interested. I'm interested in the process of manufacturing of you. The, the manufacturing of me? Yeah, you've been manufactured by our society. In other words... You're a product. I'm interested in the process by which you got turned into the shape you're now in. What you're saying is that you're interested in why you're watching it, right? I, have, I, I, I endorse nothing. I, I, uh, I'm not seeking uh, solutions except understanding. I am not promoting any uh, angles, any points of view. Well, I'm here because I'm, I am funding up you, like you said. Well, I'm here to fund a little bit of knowledge that I can. Well, bring me up. Yeah, why not? But you see, in dialogue, I often discover things that I would never know without dialogue. I make most of my discoveries while talking. Not afterwards or not before, but actually while talking. Nearly all, every insight I've ever made in my life has occurred to me while talking to people. In the classroom, I make more discoveries than I do anywhere else. Are you an individual? Well, in some sense. Oh. In some sense. Uh, apparently. 
In some sense, I mean, I'm individual in the sense that I occupy a space that is not the same space that you occupy. Well, you've got a pretty gold plated license, though, because you have your two MAs, your two BAs, and you have your PhD. Yeah, but I just puttered along and enjoyed myself. I had a ball. Oh, gee, well, that's... I mean, I didn't, I didn't sweat, you know. I, I met a man at, uh, when I had my first job at Wisconsin, I met a man who said, Mac, I'm going to beat the system. This is the PhD system of Wisconsin University. I'm going to beat the system. Two or three years later, he, he had about six shelves full of typed notes, which he called John Pick's History of English Literature. In the process of learning English literature, he rewrote the whole thing so that he could memorize every word of it. And he had become the system, totally. But what did this rewriting have to do with beating the system? It didn't. He, he became the system. But you mean he, he, didn't be. he, he felt that in, in, in learning the British He thought that thing, by going would... to the very top of the class, he would beat the system. He became it. Yes. But you said you were interested... like poor old Mountbatten. Death of a salesman. The Mountbatten series. He became the system that he killed. He killed off the British Empire yeah, by becoming it. It sounds like we're becoming a system. If you want to join it, that's how you become it. Yeah, but don't you have to join it to change it? Don't you have to get up there, up on yeah. top of the little pedestal and say, hey man, I want change and I want it now. Sure. Yeah. But, as I say, you'll never have as much leisure during any working day of your life as you have in school. Well, personally, I don't work. I don't believe in it. <laughs> I think it's just great. No, but I say, attending school or college is the most leisurely part-time activity that anybody was ever given. But you have to, so much, when you go to, say, school and university, so much is expected of you. No. They say, they, well, they, no, they say, like, okay, oh, okay, uh, I've come to college, I'm going to get my PhD, I'm going to enjoy it. See, no, I'm going to have a no, leisurely no, time. No, no, but you've got to get a certain no. thing to get that. What you enjoy is the association with umpteen people. All sorts of unexpected encounters. All sorts of amazing facts you pick up, both orally and in books. Learning is violence, of course. Mastery is violence. If you overcome some material, some difficult stuff, violence. No, that would be violence towards yourself, not violence towards the material. All right, what about the chap who's strumming? He's violating. No, he's not. He is plucking, violating strings, crossing boundaries. I like the idea about the schoolroom being there for learning. It's violence to the schoolroom if it is not used sure, for learning. It's pure violence, yes. Fine, learning, violence. violence I'm using in the sense of conquest, invading knowledge as a conquerer. Any kind of action is violence, yes. Violate, to violate, you know, to cross boundaries. Uh, learning is conquest. seeking new boundaries, conquering new territories. It's conquest. That's why you resent the pigs. They're not violent. The motor cop is. He's sitting there on his great big charger, Cyclops, with his helmet, his costume, whereas this wretched dressed little uniform guy with his rule book and so on, you despise him. Put a great big monster between his legs with one light, you, don't, you imitate it. You imitate it. Every, every one of you, is, is so far as he can afford it, imitates it. Get on those helmets and those bikes. That's, that's doing your thing. It's like being a cowboy on the electric age. Okay, but anyway, you see the huge difference between a uniform for cop and a costumed cop. A cop in costume is admirable. You imitate it. A cop in an old-fashioned 19th century uniform, you despise. It, it's not the it, it cop that you despise. It's not the uniform. It's the authority that he is putting in front of you. I am a policeman. I no, am he here is, to tell you what to do. A policeman in the sense of bureaucrat, you see, with a little set of rules. Now, the, the, cop is merely, the, cop, the cop is merely a job holder, a role-playing, involved actor. The policeman is a great and proud
He hasn't got a role. He has a role in his district. No costume. He just has a you uniform. Ask the policeman over here on New York. I know. He has a role. He'll tell you he has a role. He has, a, he has no costume. He just has a uniform. A soldier is, does not have a role. He is a bureaucrat in uniform. A general has a role. A general has a role, but the soldier doesn't. A soldier is a machine. Oh, yeah, he's he's a a machine. They truly believe that they do have a role. No, I'm talking, no, I'm talking technically now. The fragmented guy doing a little specialist job has no role. A role is total. That's what you're looking for. When you get shoved into a schoolroom, you're just turned into a little fragmented thing instead of having a total role. Uh, Marshal, how can you call a general um, that has a whole role? Um, he's a costume, general? too. Well, because he would just be playing a part in something large, except he has just a little bit bigger thing. He is total. How is he total? He has charge of the whole operation. Well, he's got so many people, um, so many people... All right, suppose left. you're playing the part of Hamlet. Nobody can take any part, part of that part away from you. You have the whole thing. It's yours. That's a role. Nobody can come in and say, now the next speech in Hamlet is mine. They can't take it away from you. Okay. You've got the whole thing. What about when you're playing the role of you? You know? Yeah. Uh, nobody can take that away from you. I think most people, are, most people sell out very quick for job. Job is not a role. Most people will sell out role quick for job. Job is easy. It's fragmented and specialist. Repetitive. Role is tough. It takes a lot of energy and imagination. And the business executive, would you have a role? Like that was Sam Spare guy you're talking about. Would he have a role? Yeah, because he's, in, he's a sort of a Napoleonic uh, conqueror. New territories. Big real estate operator. Where you think this kind of thing would sort of have appeal to young people like me? The tycoon is a role player. But it doesn't, like, I mean, like, hmm? um, the so-called people here, they would, uh, they would s scorn, um, you know, the big business executive type of guy, even though he's got all, even though he's personally Well, taxed. in a world of affluence, when you have 100,000 a year, you've got all the world at your feet, and the next million doesn't count a bit, and the next million is useless. Uh, it's, it, there's nothing that you cannot have in the present affluent world. All the services are available for 100,000 a year. So that's why businessmen are now comic. They're um, ludicrous. But don't people generally think that these businessmen uh, lack a role in your sense? In other words, that if you do go in the business setup, that you are going to be uh, sort of... It depends. ...put the, put the side and that you aren't going to have... There are new businesses that require imagination and conquer, conquering uh, role-playing. Suppose you're caught in the wheel of some, some huge corporation. Sure. Is the, the teacher a role-player, Marshall? Can be. Or can be a bureaucrat. Just a role book keeper. Then a role player is an average. I never thought of that. The role book versus role playing. A tremendous gap. You described it. The role right. playing teacher would never even call a role. Okay, you're, you're, uh, I don't know what you've been talking about. I never thought of that before, that. but it's literally true. A role playing teacher would never even look at the rule book. Doesn't give a hoot. Then you, you've described uh, this in a very idealistic uh, sort of super society. Which uh, you, which you have been thinking of. No, we live in okay, I don't live in this. I'm, I'm below this. I'm sorry. I can't understand some parts of it. How do you fit in here with your post as the head of a head of department at St. Michael's? With your MBA? I'm not head of any department at St. Michael's. Uh, I'm sorry. I wouldn't have anything to do with such a job. Aren't you uh, associated with St. Michael's right now? I am a teacher of English at St. Michael's, but I'm not head of the department. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, but you are. Uh, I am. A, I am the head. I am the head of the Center for Culture and Technology, which is role playing because it has almost nothing to do with the university. Well, how do you fit in? You know, how I don't know. So when you, say, you see, when you say fit in, you are describing this blueprinted world of fragmented job holding. I don't fit in. You don't fit in in your book. No, I'm not a bob. I just bypass. I go round. I'm not a bob. I go round. You know, this, this all seems very confusing to me. As, Listen, as if, you see, no, if, you see, if you see a very large crowd somewhere, you may choose to just move the other direction very fast. But you have them with your books. You've become part of this thing, publishing your books. You've gotten the money from them. Yeah, it's a, it, it can become a real nuisance, invasion of your own privacy. Well, why don't you give your money away, then? Or, or why don't you, you give up these Who said that books made money? You assume they do. You, you, you did get royalties they? on the books. Very tiny royalties. But they were royalties. All right, so I 
Eight. So you get a few a few bucks. The income tax people take that away fast enough. Yeah, you're talking yeah. about an actual tax. I mean, and I don't know whether hmm. you're... I'm not questioning whether you're not here whether you're accepting it, whether you're just saying oh, it's no. there. The affluence is comical today because the service environment available to all of us for free is a multi-billion dollar one. When you turn on TV, you have access to a billion dollar service for free. Uh, well, you have to get a little money, What do you do? Well, for example, if you watch, if, if you expose yourself to advertising, you have to buy. No, or if no. You expose yourself oh, to, no. Um, That's the one thing you won't buy. Uh, but you you can turn on billion dollar services for free in our world. And, um... Uh, Under the condition that you watch the commercials. No. You know, I have a no. flick off. I never listen to it. Yeah, but I don't. And I don't know what's the people. But, uh, well, the commercials are... There's another... I, I, uh, the commercials happen to, pro to be much better than the features artistically. But people don't look at them in such a detached manner as perhaps you do. I'm, I, I'm not sure it's detached. I'm more involved than detached. Oh, I'm sorry. But, you know, you I mean, I, I study these things as art forms. Okay, but other people don't, and other people oh. don't buy, and other people argue that... Uh, well, you see, if you want... You know, let me give you an example of violence, then. If you study an ad as an art form, you're violating the ad. Because the ad is... The sad is not supposed to be seen. It's supposed to be a subconscious act. Yeah. And uh, so if you deliberately pay attention to an ad, you're doing violence. Oh, wow. <laughs> to a but me, me, can, I just, can I just refer so back to something you said a little while mm. ago? You said the classroom is there for learning, right? You said the classroom... Yeah, well, I, I, like I'm quoting you, you said the classroom is there for learning. And so, and you were talking about violence. What I'm not too clear on is, is the fact that the learning, is it the learning that's violent or the fact that... that form of conquest. It's a form of conquest. But the, 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 the classroom, as far as I'm concerned, is in no way a learning place at all. Okay. Like you said, you can learn so much more from your, your that's environment. Right. Okay, that's, well, that's one, true. One thing you got me confused with is, um, you said bypass it. Now, how does one bypass it when there's a law that you have to go to school until you're 16? Or you'll be, a, like, you, your parents um, can be arrested or something. The, um... Yeah, this is you very kids, germane, I think. The kids yeah. are interested in doing something, obviously. Yeah. Well, you, you kids are freeloaders. You, you are having a wonderful ride on an affluent society. It doesn't matter if you have a dime or not. You get the ride anyway. But I don't quite see why you fuss at uh, these little petty little items like called uh, grades and classes because this is part of our life this is this is part of our life no but as i say they're so insignificant and so trivial no no i mean in dimension no not in dimension if you have to live with something it's not significant it's very significant well then you're saying that you are a very puny character who can't cope with these pitiable little requirements of the classroom and the grade school. Okay, so fine. Okay. So are, fine. We do oh. one of two things. We drop out and bypass it, or we stay in and let the oh. whole thing go on. Ten right. years from now, it will still be the same. We'll no, be ruining no, no, no. Sure. hundreds of millions here. more Won't of kids. Here. Here. Where will it be? Down the drain. Are you telling me so? Why should we fill our heads with such crap? Because it's pushing you. It is. You have already filled your heads with a million times bigger crap. Before you ever saw the classroom. And why, uh, why more? Yeah, exactly. The bureaucrats just keep pounding on. Remember that Alec Colville picture of the big black horse charging down the railway track toward the oncoming engine? That's your teacher. Oh, damn. <laughs> 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 they said... I don't know. Well, first you said... Uh, I'm talking. He told us to drop out. I didn't said, say... I didn't say you drop out. You said bypass it. You did. Said, that is not drop out. No, but you also said... <laughs> that they told us to bypass it, then you said... Um, Listen. You're just riding on the map. Uh, you people right. actually want a rule book to guide you, don't you? You want someone to tell you what to do. Right. No, you well, think you have that. Well, if you, you were in my classroom, you, you would be told what to do. No, you're not stuck in this too. You're but I don't... You're getting yourself stuck, because there's so little that that's to get to school. I mean... It's little. It's unpleasant, which blows it up, but yeah. it's little. Now, Very tiny. you're getting worried about what your teachers are like, what grades you have to get. Don't. It's not what matters. The thing is, you're in a money society. You're ruled by the holy dollar, and that's what you worry about. You worry about getting into it, learning about it, becoming involved in it, and then you say, now, this is the important thing. Do I stay with it, or do I leave it? 
When you leave it, you get hungry. <laughs> you get no, very hungry. Yes, now once you say that, you realize you can't leave it. Because if you were to do what I want to do, which is go out absolutely naked, up north, and try and make it, I'm still going to have to have some unit of value. You see, you have to have a unit of value. Mm -hmm. Why? Am I going to eat that ice cream ice I walking down the road? <laughs> You're right, there's so many calories, you know, that's going to, you know, that's going to keep me alive. You see, you, if money is kind of like your, your life. You see, when they pull the boundaries... And money is the important thing, because everybody's involved with it, you see. When Davis pulls the structure out of the schools, you are then turned loose into a society that still is very highly structured. So that if you come out of a school, of a school without a structure, into a highly structured society, it's rough. Exactly what's happening now, though. I think it's better to learn the rules, even if you don't decide to keep them. No, because you at least uh, can navigate them without getting your nose all skinned and everything. It takes about 20 minutes to do this, you see, so it doesn't take a lifetime. You people seem to imagine that there's very heavy demands made on you by these uh, conditions of schooling. They're just ridiculous. Right. Right. But you're living, you're living in a very exciting world, uh, far more exciting than the world has ever been in any period of its history. That's exactly what we would like to attempt to recreate inside of schools. Right. A period of time inside a school, in which you can make use of one room and study something. You think you'd be better off? You think you'd be better off with a mono TV monitor in the classroom? Who wants, who wants security? Who wants security? A lot of people want security. Oh, that's amazing. So it's a psychological need. That's a fear. I, what are you afraid of? It's the moment you're born, you, 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 you need security. Suckle. The womb is, is, the womb is security it's in itself. Ah. And, and, and you see the world as an extension of that. Oh, no. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Being born is violence. Very. So, you never overcome that. That's uh, when you're given your identity. Yes. Through violence, yes. of birth. Could I perhaps go back there to go there that asked a question about questions and she still didn't get an answer? Yeah. She said that uh, what we were doing was bypassing uh, all their questions, giving another nice answer. What I, what I think is, like you talk about bypassing with the school system, etc. I did. Yeah, you said... I just ignored it. Yeah, right, ignore it. Now, she's asking about questions. She's saying, why don't we get any answers? Because the answers that you're getting is that there are certain questions that really don't matter, and they're not worth answering. So we're telling you, look for another question. Can you explain that book again? There's more than one inside here. Yeah. Could you explain that Yeah, she, she said, um, we are worried about a lot of things, like the high school. And, I didn't uh, say I was worried about it, so I'd like to do something Okay, about well, it. okay, she, yeah. So if you want to do something about it, you're concerned, right? She, she was concerned about high school, you know, because she was upset because Marshall had said, let's bypass and ignore it, you know? Now, what he's saying is not, he's not saying to her, I, um, you know, I'm not going to give you an answer. He's saying your question is not the right question. You see, what's, the, what's the difference between a right question and a wrong question? And what is right and what... Because some things have more value than others. And who's to decide uh, whether they're primary or secondary? Uh, yourself. You decide yourself, you see. Now, but if you are going to ask and a question... And he's telling us, he's telling us that we're... That okay, look, you're asking him a question. Now, look, the importance of the question to her is not, it's not as important to him as it is to her. Therefore, she can't expect an answer. If you want a question answered, then you must go to a person who values the question at the same level that you do. Mm. And it's virtually impossible to find somebody that has the same set of values that you do. Therefore, why ask questions at all? Because you're never going to get an answer. All right, you can only ask yourself, you see. And what you can't find out from just being, uh, you're not going to find That's out. That's a little bit dead end, though. No, it's not dead end, because you stop going out for questions. You go in. Yeah, but I don't think there's anything there. I mean, you have to uh, oh, I, I draw think, in on things. Well, that, that's your point of view. What's the point of dialogue if you're not going to go to other people and, and 
Let's put a communication. Dialogue is an exercise in enjoyment and nostalgia. It's like saying to yourself, once I was a little kid, then I should hide another little kid. And I enjoy saying hi. Man has the capacity. You know? and, and, it, and it's necessary for men to interrelate with other, with other people. Isn't it? Yeah, because he, it. Because, because, because he enjoys it. Because he heightens, heightens your own sense of being. Yeah. Yes. If if you were there were one man in the world, there would be no consciousness. Right, and you talk to a person to become more aware of yourself. You're not really too interested in what he's saying, just the fact that you can talk to him. Consciousness is created by togetherness. Yeah, you become aware of yourself. Well, you know, I have one question that I've been wondering for the past half hour, and that is, is your whole philosophy based on the continuance of the affluent society? No, I have no philosophy. Well, is you, your base view of society and certain things that are obsolete in society, are they based on the continuance of an affluent society? No, the affluent society is here. It creates vast poverty. The one of the strange, weird things about affluence is it creates poverty. Uh, where there's no affluence, there's no poverty. There's just hardship. No, but uh, yeah. <laughs> the affluent society, affluent society creates masses of poverty. Do you, do you know why? Yeah, because, because it's affluent. to give, have, yeah. No, no, no. When, no, when there is enough for everybody, and ten times more than enough for everybody, then you have a lot of starving people, because there is a great big bureaucracy for which it is impossible to distribute that. You have to have a positive in order to have a negative, right? Well, all right. You but cannot you have, have privacy. You've got to have the very rich before you, you have remember, the very poor. Do you remember when Al Carpus came out of the pen a few months ago? He was asked, what did he look forward to most on returning to society? He yeah. said, privacy. In the pen, he had solitude, but no privacy. You have to have a crowd around you like this to have privacy. You need pu a public before you can have privacy. You want to get, you mean, in other words, get lost in the crowd to have your own privacy? Yeah. You cannot have privacy without a public, and you cannot have poverty without affluence. You cannot have ignorance without learning, and you cannot have a colored man without white people. Going back to um, a point you raised earlier about uh, we're all hunters, um, now, in our time. What if we're... Who, who's hunted? Well, as you know, we're most, uh, most of the time it's people that are being hunted down. Then who is the hunter? Who's Come the on. hunter? Didn't you read uh, recently that, there, that this room may have... Uh, well, at least there'd be... According to the law of averages, there'd be three or four uh, Pinkerton people here in different guises in this room now. Mm. And uh, are you pink or, or, or red? But the... Uh, this was a bad in the in last night's star, that in the ordinary human gathering there are amateur uh, sleuths and Pinkertons hired, uh, retained in all every schoolroom in every uh, university, masses of these people. Uh, just keeping tab on one another has become big business. Paranoia. Information data banks have become very big business, and uh, they can store vast quantities of information that couldn't previously be put in filing cabinets. Will computers dehumanize yeah. uh, society, or have yeah. they already done it? No, they, uh, they will take away every vestige of private being that you possess and private image. That's already happening at very high speed. So, uh, as Lex like said, are you, are you basing your point of view uh, towards any... Um, I guess you're not basing it towards a goal, but uh, can you relate it to... Um, uh, the ending of the society, or the I'm uh, changing of the society, or, uh, or you know, is there any direction? I, I'm to pretty sure. Things? I'm pretty sure that when people see the pattern of things around them, then the thing is already cured. Is there any way? Of, okay, suppose supposing that I, I I have a revelation and, and I see I see it all. What can I do? To 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 either make other people see it or or what? Look, a busy. I'll tell you a story. There's a guy having a, too many beers in a London, a, a Dublin pub. And in the midst of his drinking, he suddenly sees the figure of Christ standing in the doorway of the pub. And he takes another belt of booze and looks again, and there he still is. So he backs slowly toward the telephone at the back of the pub, and he rings that 69, the Pope's phone number. And he is so urgent and so convincing they put him through to the Pope. And he says, I am here in Murphy's Bar, and I am seeing the figure of Christ standing in the door. What shall I do? There's a pause, and a voice says, Look a busy. Look a busy. 
That is the answer. It's typical uh, of you people that there are no jokes, are there, in the world? Uh, people of my generation, they laugh their heads off at that joke. They have a private identity still, for or they can bounce that joke off. But your your generation doesn't tell jokes. You you tell the Newfie story about the you know, the big new Newfie game, Jigsaw, one piece. Eh? Is that funny to you people? Or I shot an, a Doofie shot an arrow into the sky, missed. Is that funny? What is funny for you people? What's funny? Now, which part? The back side or the front side? Hair or baldness? Which? The side part. The, the role-playing side. But what's funny? I mean, if, uh, you know, uh, jokes are grievances. Jokes are grievances. You want to get rid of your grievances, tell funny stories. You know what the new piece say? Do you know why the new piece jokes are so stupid? It's so the mainlanders can understand it. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, we're not talking about this. But anyway, I'm just asking you, what, what do you tell for fun as jokes? I'm interested. I collect jokes of every type. Japanese watchmaking schools, TikTok tech. TikTok tech. Japanese watchmaking school. Right. TikTok tech. That's not bad. It's like James Joyce. You know? Uh, young and easily frightened. Uh, well, TikTok tech is the same type of fun. Well, I was just wondering how the new feel about the jokes. They tell mainlander jokes. That's what I said. They said, do you see that thing, that blue thing out on the bay? That's the guy who was telling new jokes. And, well, they, they tell, they have their own uh, comebacks. But think of all the bilingual jokes. Wherever there's grievances and there's bitterness, there is humor. You can tell where the grievances are by just watching where the jokes are. What do you tell about school in the way of jokes? Tick tock tech. Okay. That's really all you've been saying this afternoon about school is tick tock tech. I mean, that's what you've been saying. It's just a place for classified knowledge and correct answers. And uh, tick tock tech. That's a very encapsulated form of saying it, eh? But it's a grievance. When you say tick tock tech, that's grievance. That's fun. So as far as I can see, this um, whole thing right now, the whole solution to our big, big problem is just to leave it. There are no solutions. There are processes. There are ends. There is violence. There is conquest. There is a perpetual struggle. Yeah. <laughs>